Ever wondered how object-oriented programming works? Well, it's a programming paradigm based on the concept of objects, which can contain data and code. Object-oriented programming, or OOP for short, is like a toolbox filled with different tools that help programmers design and implement software systems. It's used in programming to create modular, reusable and maintainable code that effectively models real-world entities and behaviors. Over the course of this video, we're going to dive into the key concepts of OOP. We'll talk about classes and objects, encapsulation, inheritance, polymorphism, abstraction, modularity, association, aggregation, composition, and even message passing. As we peel back the layers of OOP, you'll see how these concepts work together to provide a powerful and flexible framework for creating software applications. So if you're ready to unlock the mysteries of OOP, stay tuned there's a treasure trove of knowledge waiting to be discovered. Imagine you're an architect. A class is like a blueprint. It sketches out the basic structure and features for a type of building. These may include the number of rooms, the type of materials, and the overall design. But it's just a plan. You can't live in a blueprint. That's where objects come in. An object is like a building that's been constructed based on the class blueprint. It has all the features laid out in the blueprint, but it's also a tangible thing you can interact with. If a class is a generic plan, an object is a specific instance of that plan. A single class blueprint can be used to construct many different buildings. Each building or object can have its own unique characteristics, like color, size or location, but they all follow the same basic structure laid out in the class. So in essence, a class is a blueprint, and an object is a building created from that blueprint. Next, let's unwrap the concept of encapsulation. Picture a beautifully wrapped gift. The box inside contains the gift, while the wrapping paper and ribbon keep it secure and hidden from view. Encapsulation in object-oriented programming works in a similar way. It's the practice of bundling data, known as attributes, and the methods that operate on that data, into a single unit known as a class. This creates a black box effect, hiding the internal workings of the class from the outside world. For instance, consider a class called bank account. It may have attributes like balance and methods like deposit and withdraw. With encapsulation, we can hide the balance from direct access, only allowing interactions via deposit and withdraw methods. This ensures data integrity and security. So encapsulation is all about keeping things neatly packed and protected, just like a well-wrapped gift. Ever heard of the phrase, like father, like son? That's inheritance in a nutshell. In object-oriented programming, inheritance is a mechanism that allows a class to inherit properties and behaviors from another class. Imagine a class as a blueprint. When one class inherits from another, it's like it's taking on the features of the original blueprint, adding its own unique touches. The class that gives away its features is known as the superclass or base class, while the one that receives these features is the subclass or derived class. This process promotes code reusability. Instead of writing the same code multiple times, you can write it once in a superclass and then inherit it in multiple subclasses. It also facilitates the creation of hierarchical relationships between classes. You can create a superclass for general features and then create subclasses for more specific features. So, inheritance allows us to pass on traits, just like in a family tree. Now, let's morph into the world of polymorphism. Polymorphism, a term derived from Greek, means many forms, and that's exactly what it offers in object-oriented programming. It allows objects of different classes to be treated as objects of a common superclass. This means we can write methods that can be used on a wide variety of objects, as long as they belong to classes that are part of the same hierarchy. Imagine you have a fruit basket full of different types of fruits like apples, oranges, and bananas. They are all fruits, but they're also distinct from each other. With polymorphism, you can handle all these fruits in a generalized way by treating them as simply fruit, yet still acknowledging their unique characteristics when required. This leads to flexibility and extensibility in your code. Methods can be invoked dynamically based on the type of object at runtime. It's like having a key that can open multiple locks. So with polymorphism, one size can indeed fit all. Ready for a magic trick? Let's dive into abstraction. Abstraction in the world of object-oriented programming, is the art of simplifying complex systems. It's about focusing on the essential and hiding away the unnecessary. Think of it as the magician's cloak, concealing the secrets of the trick while presenting the audience with the magic. 
In programming we achieve this magic through class interfaces. They define what an object can do, its interactions with the outside world, without exposing how it does it. So, we can drive a car without needing to know how the engine, the transmission, or the braking systems work. That's abstraction in action. It's a crucial concept that enables us to handle complexity by breaking it down into manageable, understandable parts. Whether we're writing a new piece of software or trying to decipher an existing one, abstraction helps us focus on what matters most. So abstraction is like a magician's secret. It's all about showing what's necessary and hiding the rest. Ever played with Lego blocks? Then you already know a thing or two about modularity. Modularity is a key principle of object-oriented programming that encourages us to divide our programs into separate components, or modules, each handling a specific function. This is akin to having a box of Lego blocks, where each piece has a distinct shape and function, and they all come together to form a larger, complete structure. Modularity in programming offers us numerous benefits. Firstly, it enhances readability, as it's easier to understand the function of individual modules. Secondly, it promotes reusability. A well-designed module can be used in different parts of a program, or even in different programs altogether. Lastly, modularity aids in maintaining and testing the code. With clear boundaries between modules, we can update or test individual components without disrupting the whole system. So, like a Lego set, modularity allows us to build complex structures from simple reusable pieces. Let's talk about relationships. No, not those kinds. I mean association, aggregation and composition. In the world of object-oriented programming, these three concepts are pivotal in defining how objects relate to one another. Let's start with association. Association is a fairly simple concept. It represents a relationship between two or more classes. Imagine a book and a reader. The reader reads the book, right? In this scenario, the reader class is associated with the book class. Now, let's move on to aggregation. In essence, aggregation is a special form of association, a has a relationship. Let's consider a library. A library has books, doesn't it? But the books can exist without the library as well. Here, the library class is an aggregation of book objects. The key point to remember is that in aggregation, the objects have an independent life cycle. Last but not least, we have composition. Composition is a stronger form of aggregation, where the contained objects are tightly bound to the containing object. The contained objects cannot exist without the container. Think about a human body and its heart. The heart object is part of the human object. Without the human object, the heart object doesn't quite have a purpose, does it? That's composition for you. In all three relationships, you can see how objects interact and depend on each other. Association shows a simple relationship, aggregation shows a has a relationship with independent life cycles, and composition shows a tightly bound relationship where the existence of the contained object is dependent on the container. So these relationships help us understand how objects interact and depend on each other. Understanding association, aggregation and composition allows us to design and implement more realistic and efficient object-oriented programs. So, have we demystified object-oriented programming a bit? I hope so. We've journeyed through the key concepts that form the backbone of OOP. Classes and objects form the basic structure, while encapsulation helps safeguard data. Inheritance allows for efficient code reusability, and polymorphism brings flexibility and extensibility to the table. Abstraction simplifies complexity, and modularity breaks down our program into digestible, manageable chunks. We've also explored association, aggregation and composition, and how they relate objects to each other. As we've seen, these principles are instrumental in creating robust, scalable and maintainable software applications. The real-world entities and behaviors they model make our code more intuitive and easier to understand. Understanding these concepts isn't just about knowing definitions. It's about grasping how they can work together to make your coding life easier and your code more effective. Remember, mastering OOP is a journey, not a destination. Keep exploring, keep learning, and most importantly, keep coding.